Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome to my autumn fall tea real list. This is new. So, so excited to be starting to make book related videos. This brings me so, so much joy. So excited. As you can see, I have a pile of books behind me and I'm gonna talk you through why I'm reading these and what I'm excited about with these books. You may also see my prep behind me. As you can probably tell, I'm making good use of my prep subscription, so very excited about this. Um, they've just brought out pumpkin spice lattes, which I'm obsessed with, and I've never had them before, and I feel like I've just wasted the last, like, good few years of my life drinking coffee and been too scared to try it. So cheers to pumpkin spice lattes that I'm gonna go and bother my local prep with for the next, like, two months. I split this video into three sections. We have fiction, we have non-fiction, and then we also have audiobooks because I'm an audiobook newbie. I'll talk you through my audiobook journey a little bit later. However, let's get into it. These are in absolutely zero order because I am a mood reader. I, if I'm not in the mood to read something, it just, it doesn't get read. These are in absolutely no order, but I'm going to read them all within the next few months. So the first book I have is The Confession by Jessie Burton. I am so excited to read this book and I bought it maybe like over a year ago and it's just been sat on my shelf because a year ago I didn't really read and I've only just started to read properly. Very much looking forward to reading this and the cover design is just absolutely gorgeous. So obviously my graphic designer brain was like, uh-huh, <laughs> I'm gonna read that. This book follows Rose, who's trying to uncover the story of why her mother disappeared when she was a baby um, and coincidentally wants a confession. <laughs> Number two is The Danger of the Smoking in Bed by Mariana Enriquez. This has been on my bookshelf, very much similar to The Confession, for about a year. This book is like contemporary horror and gothic stories, which is why I have not delved into it. Um, but this is a genre I really want to challenge myself in. So this is supposed to be incredible and I'm very, very excited to read it. So that's number two. Number three, we have None of This Is Serious by Catherine Prastivka. Um, this, I believe you've probably seen everywhere on TikTok, on YouTube. The cover is absolutely just stunning. It's one of those books that I may be buying because the cover's pretty. None of This Is Serious is about the uncertainty and absurdity of being alive today. It's about balancing the real world with the online and the vulnerabilities in yourself, your relationships, your body. At its heart, this is a novel about friendships strong enough to withstand understand anything. This is gonna be my little light read <laughs> for the next couple months. I'm not really like a, oh, like friendship novels, love novels. It's not really my thing and I don't get into them. I really like mystery novels. However, when I've been having like a busy and stressful week, the last thing I wanna do is sit down and read about someone being like stalked. So I feel like this is like perfect. And as you can see, beautiful, of course. Number four, we have A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham. This is a new book, I believe. Um, I picked it up a week or two ago. I've not seen anybody read this yet. Um, I'm sure people have been. Maybe it's just not the people I follow. Um, but this is all about murder, which is a really light topic to follow the last one. I love a thriller. I love a thriller. So very, very excited to read this. I feel like there's a bit of a common theme here that I only pick up books with nice covers. Um, but yeah, love this. This book is about Chloe Davis's father who is a serial killer, um, but most of the missing people were never found. So Chloe's moved away, rebuilt her life, but history repeats itself and another girl goes missing. Um, so this is gonna be like kind of one of those that I put in between all of the other books um, because I know it will be a quick read for me. Sip of the coffee. The next book I am so excited for and this is a kind of book that I, I know I love reading slash listening to. Like I listen to a lot, a lot of podcasts and this kind of follows a similar theme to some of the ones that I listen to, I feel. So number five is Confessions of a 40-something Fuck-Up by Alexandra Potter. Again, look at this cover. We are, I think we're gathering that being a mixture of a graphic designer and a marketer and someone who reads, covers are just very important to me, okay? This novel is very lighthearted and definitely one that I will be reading when I've had a stressful week or two. Um, so this, on the back it says, 
A novel for any woman who wonders how the hell she got here and why life isn't quite how she imagined it was going to be and also who is desperately trying to figure it all out while everyone around her is making gluten-free brownies. <laughs> um, I love it. I love the blurb. I feel like it sets the tone for how the book is actually going to be written and yeah it's chunky but I feel like it's going to be one that I fly through and really enjoy reading. Um, there's some books that I want to read that are going to really challenge me um, but those are for the new year. We're going to just get into the flow of reading before winter. Number six, we have A Slow Fire Burning by Paula Hawkins. This is, again, a book I've just I've seen it everywhere. Like, I feel like loads of people read this book. I have read Paula Hawkins' book before. I read The Girl on the Train. Um, so very, very excited to read this. It feels like it's gonna be along the same wavelength. I love a good page turner, so this is gonna be great. Number seven is How to Kill Your Family by Bella Mackey. Um, I'm sure you've seen this everywhere. This is going very, very viral on TikTok and I've seen it and I was like, do you know what? Sounds good, covers good, obviously. I've only really seen positive reviews on this. I feel like a lot of books get a little bit of a like mixed review, but I feel like I've only seen positive, so sounds good. Um, meet Grace Bernard, daughter, sister, serial killer. Grace has lost everything and she will stop at nothing to get revenge. This again, sounds like it's very up my street. I just love a thriller, a mystery, anything that can really make me turn that page. Because for me, I get very tired when I'm reading a book. So if I'm like mentally stimulated and invested in the story, that's when I continue reading. A lot of these books are actually quite long. <laughs> um, however, I'm just having to get through them because my Goodreads is really not looking good at the moment. I need to pick it up, pick it up a lot. <laughs> Okay, so the eighth and final book within the fiction section is The Fine Print by Lauren Asher, which is the first of a three book series, I believe. Um, and I do have the second one at home as well. So hopefully I like the first one. If not, we've bought the second one for no reason. The books feature three billionaire brothers. Um, so this one I believe is Rowan. Um, and yeah, super excited to read this. I don't really know hugely what it's about. I'm not gonna lie but my friends have recommended it. And when we went to Waterstones, um, someone actually had a conversation with us about this book and said that it was really good. So I obviously picked it up. It is nonfiction time. As you can see, I have readjusted my pile to nonfiction books. For me, I absolutely love reading nonfiction. I love getting something from a book. I'm really feeling like that's gonna impact my life moving forward. Now. I run a podcast, Grown Grind. This is this is my podcast. Um, absolutely love podcasting, and it's something a really, really huge passion of mine to actually research for every single episode and find something that's really valuable and a huge lesson to give to you guys um, when you listen. So this is why I have the following books, but I'm also planning on getting a few books as I go for this kind of thing. I plan a month of episodes in advance, so like I kind of will just relook at this the next month um, and let you know in another video what other ones I pick up. But I do listen to a lot of podcasts for my podcast, so that can also be included, I guess. But the first one is Notes on a Nervous Planet by Matt Haig. I spoke about this in my last video, um, so I won't go into it too much, but it focuses on social media, addiction, work and play, basically questioning the habits of the digital age. I am so excited to read this. I made a video maybe like three years ago saying about how I feel about social media and how addictive it is. And I wanna do a bit of a follow-up to that video, um, challenging my thoughts from three years ago, but I also want to include some references and some things that can, can help you. So I'm gonna read this book and hopefully get some really great things from it. Next up for non-fiction is this <laughs> chunky book. However, I haven't wanted to read this for such a long time and I finally, finally picked it up. Um, I was having like one of those days where you're just like, everything's wrong, <laughs> don't know what to do with myself. So obviously I went to Waterstones um, and I picked up Flow, The Psychology of Happiness by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. I am so excited for this book. I am such a nerd for psychology books. Anything that has like evidence-based things behind the reason why the book was written and also just 
things that I can actually use within my everyday life. Um, so this book obviously stood out to me and of course, look at the cover. Isn't it gorgeous? <laughs> Combining over 40 years of groundbreaking research with practical advice, this book reveals the key to optimal experience, flow. This classic work of psychology is your essential guide to unlocking a healthier, more fulfilling state of being. Um, of course, this sounds very, very up my street. Yeah, very excited to read this. Next up. We have another psychology book, which is The Body Keeps the Score, Mind, Brain and Body in the Transformation of Trauma by Bessel van der Kolk. Now, this book is something I really am excited to learn about. Trauma is something for me that I wonder whether it has such an effect on things that happen in my life and I do want to really do a lot more research on it by delving into the psychology behind trauma um, and I really want to do a podcast episode on trauma as well so this is also to go in with that podcast episode. The effects of trauma can have devastating effects for sufferers, their families, and future generation. Here, one of the world's experts on traumatic stress offers a bold new paradigm for treatment, moving away from standard talking and drug therapies and towards an alternative approach that heals mind, brain, and body. Um, I think that says it all. I'm just really, really interested in things like this and I I just feel like I'm absolutely gonna adore this book. Again, this has like amazing ratings, so obviously, obviously gives you a really good insight into things. And my last book for nonfiction is The Story of Art Without Men by Katie Hessel. I don't know if this would be considered nonfiction. I would say it probably is, but it kind of is pretty self-explanatory as to what the book's about. Um, I spoke about it in my last video if you want to hear more on my reasoning behind purchasing it um, but very very excited to read this this is obviously a huge book and something that I feel like I will just chip away at but it is something that I'm going to be reading throughout the next like couple of months so I thought I would include it in this video anyway okay so I also have a kindle which I'm going to try my best to use more because I feel like I just disowned this um, so I've got a couple of books on my kindle at the moment I have the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo which is of course like just such a famous book um, and one that I haven't yet read um, and then I also have a very nice girl by Imogen Crimp I actually started this a year or so ago and never actually finished it I only got like a couple of chapters in and I started a different book so um, I want to go back and read that too. But I thought I would include that before I go on to audiobooks. I am so excited for audiobooks um, and really to get into them. Um, they're something that I've really been wanting to get into for such, such a long time now. So very excited to really delve into them. Now I have a few that I've found slash started listening to um, that I really want to complete over the next few months. I commute a lot to work or home. So I either listen to an audiobook or a podcast on the way there. I've written down my audiobook picks. Um, so my first one is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. I've heard such great things about this audiobook so I'm very excited to delve into it. I'm currently listening to I'm Glad My Mum Died by Jeanette McCurdy. Um, everyone's reading this at the moment I feel um, and it's a very deep book to listen to. It's not an easy listen. I will just put a trigger warning here for anything body image related. If you struggle with anything or have struggled with anything in the past, it may be not, might not be the book to read. It's very um, triggering. So yeah, beware. And I have a couple of other books that I've heard are really great. So I have Wahala by Nikki May, and I also have Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Apparently these two are really, really great as an audiobook. So I'm gonna get them as an audiobook instead of a physical book. But I am very excited to read all of these books that I have picked out for the next few months. If you have any recommendations for me, please comment them. I'm on a book ban but I might buy them if you comment them because let's be honest, my self-control isn't quite there with books yet. So um, thank you very much for watching. As always, um, I really, really appreciate you being here. Um, subscribe if you're not already. Um, I'm planning on making a lot more book content over the next like six months and seeing how everything goes. I love reading and it's starting to become like a little safe haven for me. Um, and I just wanna share that online a bit more. Um, so yeah. Very exciting stuff. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your week and I will see you very soon, probably next week. See ya.